Very timid, though. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh look at that, Andy. Look at this, look at this. Yeah, there's, there's more than one fish with him, I believe. Yeah, I've seen a couple of mine on that one. You know, I'll tell you, if I was, if I was back home, I would have thought that was a bluefish to where that thing hit. Northeast Angling. We're proud to present inshore and offshore saltwater fishing. We cover every species from fluke and porgies to stripers, sharks, and tuna. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations at neangling.com. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Well, here we are. We're on the Connecticut River. We're just south of Hartford. Our guest today is Jordan Paulo. Jordan's a local guide on this river. What do you have in store for us today, Jordan? Guys, we've got a great day planned. We've got overcast skies. We've got fish blowing on top. If we get some sunlight, we'll pull out into the channel and do a little jigging. Wow, sounds great. Let's get started. Okay. So, Jordan, uh, you mentioned before that we have an outgoing tide right now. Uh, actually, yeah, we do have an outgoing tide, which is going to give us a little bit more flow, and it should have these fish pretty well fired up. Now, Jordan, when I get the impression of a river, I, I think, you know, th that the water would only flow one way. And I don't know, it's kind of confusing. You, you, this, this tide will actually back up and go the other way, you said? Yeah, we have tide about, about 60 miles up. We have uh, a good tide about 10 miles north of Hartford, about 60 miles total up the river. Oh, it's gosh. amazing that we've got striped bass here, and we're just so far from salt water. It's an awesome thing. We're totally fresh here. There's no brackish water. Brackish water is about 40 miles south. Now you said one thing you want to do here is, is key on those little rips that you see. Yeah, we have a couple rips through here. We have some old wing dams uh, through the area, and we're just kind of targeting those areas. The, the fish are pretty much posting up behind those, eating up on the, uh, on the herring right now. So it's like, you know, normal bass behavior. They'll just sit on the edge of these channels and sure, these little and cuts. and. One thing on their mind, eating. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't help notice as we went through looking at the depth finder how much real structure there was on the bottom. Lots of little hills, little breaks, and even those stone walls that you were talking about. A lot, a lot of character to the area, and that, I, that's what keeps the fish. There's a lot of fish that'll swim through certain areas, and you might catch them schooling there one day, but this is an area I can come and catch fish all day, every day. I got you. So this would be one of your favorite spots, I guess. Without a doubt. <laughs> I bring you guys to the cream. You know, we, we pulled out and we all got excited. We see some birds busting, some fish rolling on the surface. <laughs> now, you said these fish just move right on through here. They'll basically just move move through this area. They're heading north. Uh, they'll swim as far as about 60 miles north. But I think a lot of fish kind of just make their homes in here for the several weeks they're in the river. Oh, there's, oh, there's a fish. fish up. There you go, Jordan. Very nice. Uh, that's off to a good start. I see you guys got those surface lures on. Yeah, we got the, actually, you know, did, we were talking about rips a minute ago. Did you guys see where that fish came from? Right out right of the center of a rip. You just kind of posted up behind that. Hey, you pull one fish out of there, what's the odds on there being a couple more? Actually, you know what, guys? There's, there's fish just coming moving through those areas all the time. Oh, you, gotcha. you guys got a great rip up ahead. We should probably be able to catch another fish out of that little rip. Andy, I give you my word, I won't get you on that case. Yeah, that's okay, I have a lot of confidence in you. <laughs> I'm glad you do. I didn't get to see that fish. Jordan, great size to him? Uh, he looks like about a seven or a nine pound schoolie just offhand. I can't see that fish really well right now, but looks like a good fish. You really Rich, you had a fish up behind you right now? No, I, little, I thought I might have seen a little end swell there. It's even though we had that little bit of rain last night, the water doesn't look too bad. We've actually, you know, guys, we've been really lucky this time of year. We had so much spring runoff that it took a while for the river to get down, but we've got a great, great clear water situation. You want to know the amazing thing about these stripers moving into the river? It's happened in the last four days. They've moved, they've, they've swam about 50 miles up the river in the last four days. It's quick. You know, that bait gets up in here, and it's quick to get them up in here. Now that pop you were working, were you, did you have a steady retrieve going there? Just a steady retrieve. Uh, the, the water temp, the surface temps actually come up about another two degrees the last few days. And, uh, oh, look at that. Quick release. <laughs> Looked like about a and, seven and, pound. Andy, can we, can we count that? Did he get it close enough yeah, to the pool? close enough to the swell. <laughs> Personally, I don't think so, but that's your call. That's certainly not going to be a pool fish. No. 
Fish on. Another one on. Here we go. Oh, we got some hot fish up here now. Oh, nice Andy. fish. That looks like a good oh. one, too. He's off. He's off. Ooh, baby. Oh, there. I got one behind me. I got one behind yeah. me. All right. We got to go. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, there you go. go, guys. There you go. I seen him. You get out there. Get out there. Let's get three of them going. Triple. Oh, this is a good fish. Nice this is a good fish. fish right here, boy. That is a nice fish. But well, this one ain't too shabby either, but that's a nice fish, Jordan. We come around the yeah, other side of yours. Oh, oh yes. Good. I might need a hand with this one, Andy. Oh, oh Andy, look at this. Oh, man, look at the size of that fish. Oh, this is great. Did you get him, Andy? Oh. No, no. Andy, keep fishing, keep fishing. I, keep I got a ways to go with this fish. Oh, oh, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Oh, I'm more interested in what you got going. Boy, this is a nice right fish. There. Guys, this is pretty. This is pretty. Oh, I'm definitely going to need a hand with this fish. I think he's not even close to done. Should I fish you? Want me to wait? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah? He's not close. She's, She's still, still turning, turning her head. You know, we got a couple of gripping tools back there. You can use that one of those grippers on. Sure. Wow, you talk oh, about God, instantaneous, amazing. Isn't, right? it, isn't it amazing? Fish right there. That is the way to do it. I'll tell you, them fish, you talk about a hot hot area and a hot fish, boy. Yeah, they clicked and that was that it. Spot. Hey, is Jordan, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, in this room, can you anchor up on something like that? You can anchor up a lot of fish, but I... Oh, here we go. Oh, oh guys. Big fish. Oh, oh, come on, buddy. I want to tease you. You ready? Let's see how hot you oh, are. See you behind. Let's see how hot you are. See behind. See behind. Oh, that was about it. <laughs> Rich, I'll tell you what, I, I think it, when you drift down this river and make a true drift, I think everything just looks a little more natural. When you're jigging them on the channel, when, you, when the fish are directly below you, I think that's the best time to anchor up on them. Boy, guys, this fish isn't even close to done yet. <laughs> I was. That's why we kept fishing, Jordan. We <laughs> we <laughs> I mean, not even close. Look at this. Jordan, guy. I am toe to toe. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. I mean, I just sat toe to toe with that oh, fish. Did you amazing, see that? Amazing. Amazing. You talk about excitement. <laughs> uh, I just sat. Uh, this is great. I sat toe to toe with that fish and just watched him as my popper went one way, his head went that way. As I brought oh, it back, me, he went the other way. Here. I oh, oh, God, he's in. oh no. we go. <laughs> now we're in trouble. Jordan, I think, oh, nice fish. I think Jordan's got the cream of the crop here. But yeah, let me get around yeah, here. Fish this fish is now. running. Can we go up under you? You're good, you're good. Well, he's stepping over my run. Have you ever seen <laughs> what, what the heck was that? Oh, you know, I'm saying to myself, man, that fish is smoking. I know. And I just see him make a swoosh, and I say, wait a second, you got that fish hooked in the back. <laughs> There was probably a whole, I'll bet you there were several fish up on that lure and they were in such competition, they're rolling up on the top of it. Okay, you know what, guys? I got a big fish here. I thought it was, I thought I was playing second fiddle there for a minute and the next thing you know, this guy came along and just, hey, guess what? This is a nice fish. <laughs> All right, I think he's just about ready. Oh, this is nice, Andy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. He just lit up on his plug. Get him unhooked. Oh, nice. What do you think, Andy? Oh, Pretty that's, fish, that's huh? Very good looking fish. Look at that. That's one of the better ones we've seen. I cannot believe I'm catching freshwater bass. Or freshwater striped bass. I, I, I just, this is beautiful. I'll let him go. Get him in the water. Oh, and again, you know when you want to release these fish? Well, uh, obviously. Rich, you have your beat on that one or what? Yeah, I got your <laughs> beat on that one. Didn't need much reviving on that fish. And again, when you release these fish, we talk about this a lot, you want to make sure the dorsal fin is up, let that fish go, slide him back into the water, and he'll give you a lot of indications when he's ready to go. He'll bite down on your thumb. You'll see, like I said, that dorsal come up, and you'll feel him pulse away. Guys, I think we need to move back up on the Guys, Andy, that was fun. That was fun. Let's move it up. Visit the Northeast Angling website at neangling.com for nationwide saltwater charter directory, fishing news, and free fishing reports. You can also find dozens of techniques, tips, and tackle for every saltwater species. Now let's get back to the action. Jordan, this river hasn't always been like this. You haven't always had this fishery here. The fisheries actually, it's, it's only been about six or seven years now that they, they really started to show up in large numbers. We always had kind of a hidden treasure here where there were some larger fish that would show up in the river, but not these just hordes of, of schools that are swimming up the river now. Now, do you have a mixture of the sizes of fish, or is it big fish? Uh, our biggest fish every year we hear caught, uh, or we see, is about 50 pounds. So we, we, see a lot of, we see a lot of fish in the 20 to 30 pound class, or some trophy-sized fish on the river. 
You know, you guys, you guys are slinging those lures. I just switched over to what's called a, a beach runner here. It's like a, a swimmer. Try something just under the surface in case maybe they're a little reluctant to come up on top. You know, these low light conditions, a lot of times, I like to stay with the surface, surface lure, and I like to see those hits. You know what? I'm with you on that, Andy. If I could catch them on top all day, I'd do that. Yeah, and I, it's, it's probably the most exciting way to fish is the top water lures. But in the same token, you know, you'll get a, a pattern that'll change a lot of times, right? And, you know, I know if I blast two in a row on this, I can guarantee you, Andy will be in that box <laughs> faster than you can play. Yeah, your I think I'll be right uh, there. Yeah, I'll be throwing a beach runner in a second. I got actually a little end swirl behind mine right now. And you know, that's another thing you can do. You can cheat each other or mug each other, cheat each other. Like, I'm going to follow Andy's cast up right now. See, and he said he just had a fish come up on him and see if we can get him to come up on that. And you do that with the poppers also, right, Jordan? For sure. Like I said, the, the most important thing, the way the fish are nosing up behind these rips, is you know there's not just one fish in that rip. Yeah. There's, a, there's a pile of fish, and, and, and you just act, you activate that uh, you know active feeding. You stimulate the feeding. Where one fish bites, it becomes competition for other fish sure to get Sure fish behavior. We've seen that quite a bit, right, Andy? Yeah, and it's a competitive behavior. A lot of times one fish hits a, hits a lure, and even a hooked fish, a lot of times we'll get a, another fish to follow it in like we saw earlier. Jordan, I want to hop on the other side right. of you here for a second. Yeah, I'm going to come up and join you here, Jordan, so watch your back cast. All right. You know, you really think we should put you on the outside of us. Being a lefty, it's kind of tough to have that back cast. You can't <laughs> trust us lefties anywhere. So, Rich, if you don't mind, I'm probably going to come around this side of you now. Just, you know, we're, just so I can get the first no, cast. No, we're, we're going to be playing. <laughs> we're going to be playing this game all day. I can see that. It's going to be like leapfrog on this boat. We talk about that a lot, how you know people feel these fish are so spooky. And we were on a full run just then, going about maybe 25, 30 miles an hour. Look at this guy's right He's still on you, Jordan, huh? And then we stopped, and on the first cast, Jordan rose a fish. Now, I, I, guess, I guess they're really not that spooky, huh? You know, the thing there's, oh, there's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. There's a fish. Oh, oh, oh yeah, there you go. Oh, I tell you, these braided lines. I love these braided lines. See, I was down to the right when that fish hit, and I really couldn't get a good set. Oh, I got a swirl behind there mine you go, here. Andy. Here we go. Oh, oh look at right that. the boat. I'm out of room. Oh, oh, just, oh I saw that fish. I saw it. Oh, look at them all. There's like a whole bunch of them. Somebody get a, get a cast back in there. This is almost like uh, Bonita fishing, you know? <laughs> they're at the side of the boat, and they're going crazy. Oh, pound, baby, pound. Look at this. I'll tell you. These, How many fish were up with that last fish? Uh, at a least, dozen fish. It, it, was it real? It was a dozen <laughs> fish. No, right. I was going to say at least a half a dozen, but you were right on top no, of it better think. than I was. This fish is dragging me around, guys. I'm going to go for a walk in a second. Oh, wow. Look at the Andy, the power in these fish here. I mean, we catch these fish in the salt water, and, I, you know, if anything, I, I would have thought they would have been a little bit more lethargic <laughs> up in the fresh water. They seem to be even more feisty. That water temp's still really cool. <laughs> That's really working around the I'm boat telling here. you, boy. I mean, I, I got 14 pound test braided line on here from Suffolk, and this stuff, I'll tell you, I love it. The fact that there's no stretch in this line is beautiful. Just keep tension on the fish and look, will you? It's I, just I, working. I have a tight drag. You may not believe it, but I have a tight drag, and this fish is still schooling me. You gonna look at him yet? He's like a little bigger than look the last guys. one. Look at this, guys. Look at this up ahead. We got, Whoa, we got some we got fish on the scene up there. All right, now look, buddy. You got to cooperate because I want to get another one. No, no, no. You keep that fish. Let me go to work right here. Uh, uh, Rich was enjoying the fight of that fish until he saw the other fish. I got a lost exactly. interest in this guy. Nah, I didn't lose interest in you, buddy. You're beautiful. I'll take you all day. Oh, settle down. It's the other thing, guys. You got to be very careful when you're working these these fish at the side of the boat with these trebles swinging around. Now, that's one of the reasons why we like to crush the barbs on them. Yeah, we talked about that a couple of times, and, and you know, it, it, you're definitely right. Send him on his way, and I'm not wasting any more time. Visit the Northeast Angling YouTube channel for hundreds of videos, including full-length episodes, exciting clips, product reviews, and instructional videos. And now, the exciting conclusion of Northeast Angling. You know, we're back there again with Jordan Paulo. We're fishing the Connecticut River, just south of Hartford. 
And Jordan, we just slid down a river a little bit. We had some good fish up river, and we seen some herring up on it. Actually, Andy, you seen some herring up on this bank here. So we're gonna just slide yeah, up in here. Yeah, let's just slide in there. It's a little bit slower water. The bait's really packed up in there, and probably some stripers up behind us. All right. Let's give that a shot. Cool. Oh, you called it. You called it, bud. You said these fish have been up in the they river now just for four days. Up. Should be ready to pop any day now. And I, and I think, uh, man, I tell you, you did your job. Let me tell you. Thank you, Jordan. Sure, I'd love to do it. Do it all day. Now we saw the we saw these fish coming up. Look at them. They're still busting up. Still busting on that Big corner. Time. Yeah. Get up on them again. Oh. Come on. Oh, look at this. Can you believe that? I saw that fish. That fish didn't even look that big. No, he's, he's not. He's just, a ride. Well, he said he all have attitude, good one right? There? Wow, that was a nice buck. Andy, come on, clear yourself no, up. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Look get look out fish. there. Yes. Very nice. Clear yourself up, buddy. Get back over there. Look, right up there. I got him. Ugh. Whoa, settle down, wow. you. That's a lot of fish over there. You ain't kidding. There's some big fish busting up in there, too. Shouldn't take long with that, Andy. You're right in there. I'm right there. He's on it. Still there, still there. Oh, look away, man, look, look at that, look at that. Oh, I oh there he is, there he is. I stopped it and I hooked him. Job, it, caught, it caught up to him and he nailed it. Keep a good bend in the rod. Nothing jerky, nothing quick. You know, especially with this braided line, we don't have much of a shock. And you got to let the rod absorb all the fish's quick motions. It's a nice little fish right here. Here we go. Andy, whenever you're all set, we'll probably just no, you guys move are, right back up to the top. I have my fish in my hand. Okay, let's get Feel back up Feel free to move those. the boat. That's a good one, Andy. Not bad. These are some really pretty fish. We've gotten a bunch like this. This isn't quite the biggest one, but they are nice and a lot of fun. Let's get this guy back. Oh, there he goes. In this okay. calm water right here, we just seen a couple, couple, couple boil up here. You know, uh, we keep talking about herring, and you know, a lot of people probably wondering why we're not fishing with live herring. I'm sure you'd love to do that, but you know, it? we definitely would. But uh, they actually have a herring regulation in Connecticut. They've seen the stock drop, and there's another one coming up there. Um, and we're not allowed to possess a live herring or catch a live herring on the river now, so it's all up to artificials. And I, I think it's really it's made the, the anglers wiser having to do this. Is that true for any live baits? Could you use a small shad or anything like that? You could use a shad, but you can't possess a herring or an live in the river. Wow. So there's basically just no bait fishing is what no you're saying. I, hey. And how do, they, how do they know that those stocks have, have decreased? Well, uh, they do studies. We have a fish ladder, which is about 50 miles north of here, where they actually do counts on the fish. Uh, the Connecticut River is actually famous for its shad fishing as well. I don't know if you guys know that. We have a, just a beautiful shad run. We got a great hickory shad run in the fall, but they do counts on the fish, and they saw that the stock declined. And these herring, are, are, why are they up here at this time of year? Uh, to spawn. The alewives and the herring spawn in the, in the creeks in the river. And how, how long do they stay? Uh, roughly about a month, a month and a half. You know, Andy, we're using these, these top water lures here, and, and they're loaded. They have these ball bearings in them, and we just talked about how the sound and the vibration all key, key, keys into this. And, you know, they, they hear that, and they, they come and running. And you don't even have to move them a lot to get that noise. You can work it real slow and get that same rattle out of it. I don't know if Jordan knows something that, that we don't know, but we're looking at this beautiful rip in front of us, and he's pretty persistent off the back. I don't know. We Guys, I've been seeing so many herring just running this bank. I, I, I just feel there could be a fish running, but there's just too much bait over running on this soft water. And that is an awesome looking rip, but I just feel like there's just too much here. See, but that's, again, that's what it's all about. It's your instincts telling you to go that way, and, and our instincts telling us to go this way. You know, we spend so much time fishing structure. We are we see anything that looks a little out of the ordinary, it attracts us like a magnet. It's very hard for us to throw sometimes at the still water. Oh, there's, there's no, it's very hard for me to do it. It's just we've seen so much bait pop. Very timid though. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at that, Andy. There's more than one fish with him, I believe. Yeah, I've seen a couple of on that one. You know, I'll tell you, if I, was, if I was back home, I would have thought that was a blue fish the way that thing hit. You see that, Andy? That it fish, like a nice fish, too. The fish just you know what the exploded. great thing is, guys? The fish are coming out of about three or four feet of water, so they, when got, they come out that shell, they, they roll like alligators almost. The great know? thing is they got no place to go but up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>
Man, I'll tell you, Jordan, these fish are feisty, huh? They are awesome. When you pull them out of shallow water like that, they, they roll like alligators. You know, they're coming out of such shallow water, and there's so many fish backed up behind these eddies, they're just in constant competition. Oh, this guy's got a fish behind him. You see that? Really? Yeah. Does he really? Followed him right to the surface. I just looked back, I seen another tail going right behind him. That was cool. How big of a fish is that, Rich? It looks like maybe seven, eight pounds, something like that. Need a hand with them? No, nah, I think I can get them. Okay, He's still got a lot of kick to him. You know, when that fish came up, Andy, I would have swore that was a bluefish. <laughs> that was a very, was a very hard hit. And, you know, you cast it, that one little eddy, we saw an end swirl, and then, you know, another 10 feet, nothing, and then that fish just blasted that one. Not a bad fish. No, not a bad looking fish. I'll tell you, you know, we mashed the barbs on these, and I'll tell you, that's something you really should do with these trebles. Fishing these treble hooks like this, they get a, fa a face full of trebles, and sometimes it can be really tough to get this hook out. It's also a good idea when you're unhooking fish and you got those mashed barbs, you have a risk of getting that hook in your hand. It's going to come out a lot easier with that mashed barb. That's a fun fish right there, ain't it? Look at that. Not too bad. That's nice, great healthy. Great wow. That's a good start. Get him going back in the water. Now his dorsal's up and he doesn't need any reviving whatsoever, so I'm just going to slip him right back in the water. There he goes. That was nice. Now, yeah, he's got to be hunting for these rips now, Andy. I'm getting all excited I'm here. About to run right. There's one right here. About, about to run right You have here. about five rips running through the area. Well, I can see that, and like you know, exactly like you said, Jordan. I went over that rip, and right when I came through it, I seen that that fish came right up and just blasted it. And I'm gonna go over the top of you here, if that's okay. Yep. You know, I just slowed that plug down, came through the rip, and that fish just blasted on it. I'm just gonna set my rod down and give you a hand on these. You know, I went to a, a little I bit. Missed it. I went to a little bit smaller plug. You know, went to that little four inch, right. and that fish just swallowed the whole thing. It just disappeared. You know, I got one on here. I don't think it's nearly as big as the one that you got, but this ain't a bad fish either. We may want to net this one, okay? Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's in that bow folder. Oh, not a bad looking fish. Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. <laughs> I don't think he's going to compare to what we got on the back here, though. Well, we're going to see in a minute. Oh, double up again, Andy. Here we go. Work him, Rich. Oh, yeah. This fish swimming back at the boat. I'm going to see this fish in a second. It's going to be scary when he gets up to the boat. Yeah, good looking fish. fish. Really nice looking fish. Get him back in. Yep. You see what you guys got there? Yeah, we're working him. Really nice looking fish here. Yep. Oh, nice fish, Andy. Nice fish. Oh, get that fish. Get no. nice, Jace. All right. That's what we came here to get. Nice job, both of you, Jordan. Nice job oh, with the net, also. That's a good fish. Let's get this fish there we out go. Of the net. Get it real quick. Yeah. Good looking fish. Maybe stuck in there. Okay, let me help you out with the net right there. Okay, she's almost she's all you. Okay. Here my pliers and southern hook. Yeah. Get that fish right there. There we go. Water. Right back in the I'll tell you what, Jordan, this is a nice Connecticut River striper here. Just Good a looking beautiful fish, guys. fish. It's all about. Let's get her back in the water. Got the thumb gently in the corner of her mouth. Just work her through the water. Fin's starting to come up. She's biting down on me. There she goes. Good job, guys. Very good job. Very nice. Where are you, bud? Hey. Jordan, good job, that's a good Thank you for watching Northeast Angling. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations as seen on this show at neangling.com. See you on the water.